So Lisa said, uh, I started CK12 Foundation, it's true, but it's not just my work. It's the work of many, many people and uh, teachers. How many of you have seen this cover? Well, if you haven't, this is where we are today. When I started CK12, I thought to myself, how can I help in education? Because my kids, I have four children, by the way, and they all had a really good education. And the whole, their education was all about what I didn't have. Their education was about individualized, passion-based learning at their own pace. But when, I, when you look at what's happening in our school system, in the school systems of US of A, you wonder, how did we get here? How did we get to this? Well, I started thinking, and I said, how can I help at least take away some of the pain, take away the beast of burden? What is that? So I looked at myself, I looked at what was going around, and I said, what if we were to change the vehicle of delivery of content? Simple. So you've got to remember that each one of us is an individual. We all come with different strengths, different backgrounds, different passions, different likes, dislikes, what we need in our life. You know, I could go on. Those are us. We all come from a different starting point. We go at different you know, paces. We go at, to different heights. We go to you know, different places. Yet our system asks for one thing, one flavor. So keeping all that in mind, I said, OK, what if we could help the teachers, at least in their own way, customize to the requirement of each student? And that's really where we started from. We said, OK, let's give them tools. You know, one of the very, very early things I realized when I started this project, I said, OK, let's give them authorings, the ability to customize. We can give them the uh, ability to take content and assemble it in the way they need it and to be able to publish. And, and that was another one word people didn't understand. It wasn't physically publishing uh, like the 826 books, but it was about publishing for your own need, for your own classroom and then to be able to explore and to get everything together in one place. Now, that was the idea that we came up with originally. You know, prototypes, right? Prototypes are, don't always, aren't always perfect. So we went back, we went to the field to find out what it was that would, you know, they needed. We found out, and none of this should be a surprise to anybody here, because I, I think there are a lot of teachers in this crowd just a quick hands up if you're a teacher. Okay, quite a few. So teachers, and this is not supposed to be uh, you know, in a bad way, but teachers are challenged, as are the classroom, because there's no interactivities, there's no you know, computers, there's no way to provide all that. Each one of us determines our own quality. Something that you know, I like, you may not like, because it agrees this is, goes to the individual part of us. So we focused on our own load. Teachers are focused on their own load. There's limited time, limited resources, and you have to make do with whatever you have. You're constantly working, even beyond your own time. You're putting in your own money to get you know, resources for your own classroom. I know it's really pathetic, but teachers told me we only have a few dollars. You know, some people lucky had $200 to spend on their classroom in a year. So that's a really pathetic situation to be in. Some teachers like to author. In our own case, we found about 25% of the teachers author, which is pretty high. Usually it's, it's less than 10%. So maybe it's, it's sample biasing because we allow you know, that kind of, so those kind of teachers come to our site. And they all said they want interactive content. Because there's a, you know, we, we've been teaching through a single modality, maybe two, but now we need multimodality. 
and interactive is the one that's really missing from most classrooms. What about the students? Ninth grade students came to us, and this is what they said CK12 was. This is Jerry. He is looking online for textbooks. And this year, Jerry has to buy five textbooks, math and science included. Each book is $80. That's a total of $400 Jerry has to pay. But Jerry's grade has 200 people in it. That's $80,000 spent on textbooks, which is a lot of money. To put $80,000 in perspective, with it, you get 857,000 pencils, 800 MacBooks, or even three Priuses. For all that money, you can get these. Or, for zero dollars, you can get the Flexbooks from CK12. Flexbooks can be customizable to student and teacher needs, while textbooks are unchangeable and can be full of information non-relevant to the curriculum, not to mention they are heavy and weigh you down. In contrast, Flexbooks are light, easy, and can be taken wherever you go on your computer, Kindle, phone, and iPad while still being printer-friendly. And did we mention Flexbooks are free? With the money you save, you can buy notebooks, binders, and computers. Things to help a student become a better learner. The CK12 website makes downloading, managing, sharing, and viewing your Flexbooks easy. It offers a wide variety of Flexbooks on subjects ranging from algebra, to earth science, to engineering. And coming soon, CK12 will offer concept-based learning, which means it will allow for learning not organized by large, overarching subjects, but instead by small, broken-down sections of learning material. In fact, CK12 has enough learning materials in their inventory that it can be said they have a way to learn for every age between the grades 6 and 12, with K through 5th coming soon. The human dependency on textbooks is broken. Now Jerry is happy about all the money he saved, and so are people worldwide. CK12. Editable, organizable, online, free. I thought they did much better of telling you what CK12 does than I could have done in two minutes. And this is completely done by them, the students, two students, ninth grade. You know, they're not challenged. They're ready for other ways of learning. You know, there's lo the world is wide open for them. So you may ask me, so what, that you provided all this, you know, great stuff. I think it's great, but um, <laughs> if you have suggestions, come and tell me. We'd love to incorporate some of the things you need. Let me share with you some of the results we are seeing. We have an interactive math program called FlexMath. It's flexmath.com for anyone who's interested, algebra. And before using FlexMath, and these are uh, sample uh, districts, LPS is Leadership Public School. It's a charter of four schools, and Riverside and Campus on Envision Charter School. These are just sampling we picked out. I don't have to say much. You can tell from the graph itself that there was great improvement in one year. This is from 2000, uh, 2010 to 2011. So they used it in 2010 and again in 2011 based on the standardized test. That's what we have. That's not what I advocate, but that's how we measure uh, student performance at this point. The lower graph, before graph, is how many students were proficient in, in algebra in that year and what they did after they used this math. It's a great program. I encourage teachers to go look at it. So I think Open High School of Utah, there are some people here from. Uh, so they took our content, customized it to their needs. I believe one of their biology teachers who did that uh, got the high, sixth highest grades results in the state. And as well, she got presidential award for her work in biology. The students were talking a lot about the cost. Anoka Hennepin in Minnesota, the school, was given $200,000 to create content. They took our content, saved $175,000 for their school district. There are many examples of that. Virginia did a physics book. Utah did a, a, a book on engineering. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, ASU did a book on uh, engineering. 
So we are actually doing a lot of work. More work is coming out. More pilots are coming out. There are about 85 pilots going on today. We provided content on the devices. <coughs> to date, all, we have about 7 million units downloaded. That number might seem small, but remember, from our own surveys, we find each teacher is sharing with 70 students. So do the math. We can't keep track of what happens once they download. But we know it's being used, not only here, but outside the, you know, the US of A. We're using this content many places. What's coming next? I think there was a mention of concept-based learning. So we are moving more towards learner focus. We've been focusing on teachers and their needs, the teacher's additions or assessment or whatever else the teachers might need. We've been focusing on that. Now we're focusing on the student themselves, the learner. So we've created smaller chunked content, we, which is all, all our contents are curriculum aligned, common cores in the 50 states created uh, a superset. It's, it's all multimodal. It's self-paced. It can be guided or unguided. It has feedback loops. We took all the state's requirements and we took common cores and some societies like AAAS and the math society and we created super set of requirements. And from that, we created a learning pathway, which is the backbone you just saw on the previous slide, which is the backbone of this, the concept-based learning. So if you look under the browse by subject, it takes you to a particular subject that you need to learn and it guides you through that content. Here's what a single concept will look like. It'll have its text-based modality as well as it'll have videos, it'll have interactive elements you can click, click into and get that, uh, uh, you know, that example. So what in essence this does is immerse a student in many ways of looking at the same content. And what's that? Guess what? It's practice. Practice, right? The dreaded word. But you know something? It's very, very important. Where the students from where I come from, India, China, can on the spot not worry about what's happening. You know, they'll go multiply in their minds. They'll multiply or they'll add or, or know the concepts, whereas our students are still struggling at that point when you are in, in, in a particular situation. That does wonders to the confidence of the student that's in that situation, if you can be ahead of that situation, uh, ahead of the other students. This is why creating a system where you can learn in different ways. If you want to learn through video, start here. You want to learn from text, start here. We can give you that choice. Interactivity. We're creating our own, and this is a prototype of what's going on, but you, know, you can imagine the rest. We are also giving you feedback. You know, one of the things that I used to find really, really irritating was when I took a test, and I struggled with that through that test, and I gave it to the teacher. Week later, a month later, whatever time period, I had lost context of that fight, the emotional fight I had in my mind. When the teacher got me my paper back, all I wanted to know was, what did I get? The moment is lost. We can give you that feedback immediately. One problem, in the end, I'll leave you with this. Technology is not going to give you everything you need. It's not the answer. It's the user and the tool that go hand in hand. And there will be time when this will be you know, part of our lives. Everyone will access, have access to it. We all know we're in that stage where we're struggling to get this into the hands of the students. But I think we should try it. Thank you so very much.